Today it's movie recap time for Death Race, an action movie released in 2011. The film starts with the collapse of the American economy. Crime rates are through the roof, and the number of people incarcerated has never been higher. To manage that, many criminals are now put into prisons controlled by private companies. Among these institutions stands the Terminal Island Penitentiary, a maximum security prison run by a woman named Claire Hennessy. Hennessy hosts an event known as the Death Race, a brutal competition that takes place within the penitentiary's walls. It turns out that she streams the whole thing online to make a huge profit off of it. In one of these races, a masked racer called Frankenstein has the company of his female co-pilot, Case. After being under heavy gunfire for a while, their car can't take more damage. Case then suggests that Frank give up and let their rival, Joe, win this one. However, Frankenstein declines, saying the finish line is not that far. Instead of slowing down, he ejects Case from the vehicle, just in case things go south. Soon after, Joe launches a missile that obliterates Frank's car, ending his life on the spot. Elsewhere, Jensen Ames, a man who works in a factory, is engrossed in his tasks. At the same time, his fellow workers organize a protest against the company's ridiculously low pay rates. As tensions escalate, the factory management reaches out to the SWAT team for assistance. The special team begins using rubber bullets, and Jensen tries to help out a fallen friend. As he does so, the SWAT team ends up targeting Jensen instead. In the face of the aggression, Jensen fights back and knocks down a few SWAT officers. Eventually, he manages to escape the chaos and get home. Jensen's world consists of his wife, Susie, and their precious two-month-old daughter, Piper. After Jensen and his wife have some fun in the kitchen, the man decides to take a shower. When he returns, he encounters a heartbreaking scene. Susie lies lifeless in their kitchen. Just as he turns, a sudden spray blinds him momentarily and renders him unconscious. When he wakes up, he finds himself gripping a bloodied knife, and police officers are all over him. Jensen is then arrested for a crime he didn't commit. It is informed that Jensen gets a life sentence for ending his wife's life. His daughter, Piper, goes into foster care. Six months down the line, Jensen's new home becomes Terminal Island Penitentiary. As he gets there, prison authorities snap his photo and clean him up. He is placed in a cell already occupied by other inmates. As they attempt to mess with him, the guards hear noises of a fight in the cell. As one of them returns to check it out, Jensen is standing while his cellmates are all knocked out. The next day, an inmate welcomes Jensen by spitting on his food. Before he can react, another prisoner named Pachenko taunts Jensen in front of everyone, saying that he's the kind of man who ends his own wife's life. As expected, they begin fighting right away. Jensen manages to hit Pachenko, but before it gets too serious, the prison officers stop the fight, and Jensen is taken to see Hennessy. The woman presents him with an opportunity to participate in the infamous death race. She shares that Frank, a pilot who used to wear a mask, passed away in his last race. She wants him to become Frank, since everyone thinks he's still alive and recovering from his injuries. As Jensen declines the offer, Hennessy informs him that the reward for a victorious performance is freedom from those prison walls. All he needs to do is win five races. Since Frank himself has already won four of them, Jensen only needs one more win to secure his freedom. Thinking about his daughter, Jensen eventually agrees to race in Frank's place. Shortly after, Hennessy leads him to an auto shop, where he's introduced to Frank's crew, Gunner, Lists, and Coach. They also show him Frank's race car, a mighty Mustang V8 fastback. Coach then leads Jensen to an open field, revealing the people who will be racing against him. His competitors are, Hector Grimm, aka the Grim Reaper, Pachenko, boasting a record of 9 race fatalities on track, 14K, a Chinese-American mafia leader, and Travis Colt, a former NASCAR pilot. The last competitor, known as Machine Gun Joe, boldly approaches Jensen and his crew. Thinking Frank is in the infirmary, Joe tells Coach to let Frank know that he will end him for good in the next race. As the first stage of the race approaches, Jensen goes through the prison corridors, pretending to be Frank. The inmates cheer him on, believing Frank has fully recovered. Just before the race begins, the bus with female inmates gets there, and the men go crazy. Jensen is introduced to his beautiful navigator, Case. Case. As the race starts, Jensen has some trouble adapting to the car's nuances, but Case and the coach ensure he quickly finds his rhythm. It doesn't take long for Joe to relentlessly attack Jensen's vehicle, driven by his determination to end Frank's life. It turns out that each racer can access three distinct features throughout the track. The first two, defense and attack, 
can be obtained by passing the car over the shield and sword symbols. The third feature, depicted by a skull image, operates as a lethal trap. If a racer crosses its path, the next racer to hit it meets his end. With these possibilities in play, Hennessy activates these features whenever she wants, driving the racers to look for them and eliminate one another. After a racer goes over the skull symbol, it is shown what it can do to a car. A robust steel structure lifts from the ground and destroys the unlucky car behind it. To Jensen's disappointment, some of the features simply don't work for him after he attempts to activate them. Still, the man manages to eliminate one of the other racers. As Jensen continues the race, he catches sight of Pachenko, who's driving right beside him. Pachenko's hand gesture catches Jensen's attention, and the recognition is immediate. He makes the same gesture his wife's killer did after spraying Jensen. The memory distracts Jensen, whose car gets rammed from the side by Machine Gun Joe. Consequently, Jensen finishes the race with lots of damage to his car, which goes straight to the repair shop. The race is structured into three distinct stages. In the first two, the goal is basically to finish the race, since racers try hard to eliminate each other. In the final stage, one must finish the race in first place to win. As the race unfolds, the technicians inspect Frank's car, trying to find out why things failed to work during the race. It turns out everything is in order, which makes them suspect someone might be tampering with their car. After the race, Jensen goes straight to Hennessy's office. After finding out about Pachenko, he promptly refuses to participate in the upcoming race. He knows that the woman orchestrated everything so that he could fill Frank's shoes and race for her. As expected, the number of online spectators since Frank returned has gone through the roof. Hennessy takes her manipulation to another level, showing him a picture of his daughter with a new dad. She tells him that if he doesn't cooperate, Piper's life could soon come to an end. Out of options, Jensen agrees to race again. During repair hours, Jensen catches a glimpse of Pachenko at the auto shop. With a thirst for vengeance, he trails Pachenko to his team's garage, only to stumble into a well-laid trap. Pachenko and his men quickly start beating him. All of a sudden, as things look bad, Liss saves his life by sticking a pen in Pachenko's back. Jensen seizes this opening and unleashes his counterattack against Pachenko's men. However, the fight is interrupted by Hennessy's guards, who use stun guns on them and tell them to save it for the racetrack. The next day, it's time for the second stage of the race. As it begins, Jensen purposefully stays behind and confronts Case, questioning her involvement in Frank's death. Initially resistant, Case yields to Jensen's threat to eject her, revealing a shocking secret. She was coerced by Hennessy to sabotage Frank's last race, a command she had to replicate with Jensen. It is now clear why Jensen's weapons didn't work during the first stage. After finding out the truth, he accelerates the Mustang and aggressively attacks Joe and Pachenko's cars. Amidst the intense race, Jensen maneuvers past Pachenko's car and gets the sword feature. In a bold move, he turns his vehicle 180 degrees, facing Pachenko's car. After they shoot at each other for a while, Jensen turns the Mustang again and releases some smoke, making Pachenko crash into a pillar. Although the race is still on the way, Jensen stops his vehicle, puts on Frank's mask, and goes after Pachenko, who is badly hurt. In front of Hennessy's cameras, Jensen snaps the man's neck in a lethal move. Jensen's audacity awakens Hennessy's wrath, making her unleash a huge new force, the Dreadnought, her customized tanker truck. Panic sweeps through all racers as the Dreadnought looms into view. The vehicle features devastating weapons like rotating drills that ruthlessly pierce through the car. One by one, competitors fall victim to a barrage of relentless gunfire and other attacks. This causes several racers and navigators to lose their lives. 14K meets his end as a missile explodes his whole car. Eventually, only Machine Gun Joe and Jensen are left alive. In a bold move, Jensen uses his car's communication device to reach out to Joe. He suggests they join forces and go on a fence against the big truck. As Joe accepts his offer, they initiate their plan. They overtake the dreadnought under heavy fire and manage to simultaneously activate the skull image feature. As expected, the steel structure emerges from the ground just in time to make the dreadnought hit it at full speed. This completely destroys the vehicle upon impact. Hennessy gets enraged after seeing her creation obliterated, and the second stage is concluded. After the race, the big boss gets increasingly anxious about Jensen's potential victory, which would mean the man's freedom. Hennessy then takes drastic measures, sending a prison officer to plant a bomb beneath his car. Shortly after, Coach shows Jensen some footage of the second stage of the race. He directs attention to a specific area just beyond the barricade wall, 
exposing it as a potential escape route from the prison. Quick on his feet, Jensen asks Gunner to add another half gallon of fuel to the Mustang. Gunner doesn't see the point but does so anyway. As the final stage grows closer, Hennessy pays a visit to Jensen within his cell, handing him his already signed letter of release. In an attempt to motivate him, she says that all he needs to do is win. However, she clearly has other plans for him. The climactic finale of the death race unfolds, featuring only the last two participants, Jensen and Joe. As Case steps into the car, she promptly notices some modifications. Jensen reveals his strategic alterations, and Case agrees to follow his orders. After receiving her release papers, she's no longer under Hennessy's control. The race kicks off and Jensen and Joe embark on their high-speed pursuit, navigating the twists and turns of the racetrack. Throughout this pivotal moment, Hennessy intervenes in the race and activates Joe's features but not Jensen's, granting Jensen's opponent a huge advantage in terms of firepower. Joe then employs relentless attacks on the Mustang. As Hennessy allows a new rocket feature on Joe's car, the racer decides to use it. To everyone's surprise, he directs the rocket at the track's perimeter fence. The impact obliterates the barrier, creating a breach that allows their passage. As Hennessy finally understands what they did together, the men are already driving outside of the track. Faced with the abrupt escape of her captives, Hennessy dispatches her men to capture them. She grabs the bomb trigger device and pushes the button. To her disappointment, the car does not explode. Unbeknownst to her, Coach had detected the planted bomb and successfully made it harmless. With her plans crumbling, Hennessy mobilizes helicopters and troops, intensifying the manhunt for Joe and Jensen. As they cross the bridge, the only way in and out of there, Jensen sees lots of police cars chasing them. In a daring move, he orders Case to pull a red lever, which releases the additional half-gallon previously added to the car. This explodes several police cars and buys them some time. However, the helicopters are still chasing them. Soon after, Case steps forward, offering to impersonate Frank and continue driving the car. Since her freedom is guaranteed, Jensen accepts her suggestion. He opens the door and jumps from the vehicle to make his escape. Soon after, Jensen meets up with Joe. The duo makes a desperate sprint to catch a passing train. They hop on it and manage to hide from the choppers. Not long after, the police capture the person wearing Frank's mask. Hennessy's orchestrated re-arrest operation earned her lots of praise and rewards, boosting her public image. She cleverly hid from the public that case was the one beneath the mask. As she goes through gift boxes in her office, one of them reveals the very bomb she had sent to be placed in Jensen's car. As Coach presses the detonator, the entire room explodes, ending her life. Months later, Jensen and Joe, having successfully escaped prison, forge a fresh start by establishing an auto repair business in Mexico. One afternoon, a speeding sports car rushes onto their premises. The driver turns out to be Case, also free from prison. In the last scene, she greets the boys and gets to meet Piper, Jensen's baby girl. Thanks for watching. If you like our content, please like the video and don't forget to subscribe.